Hello everyone, my name is Corey Padilla and I'm with Dovetail Genomics and today we'd like the opportunity to share with you some really exciting work we've been doing to redefine the high c toolbox by both uh, opening up new genome-wide applications, one of these is uh, deployed genome phasing, as well as looking at the protein-directed chromatin architecture uh, through our new product high chip. So just to orientate you uh, to the outline of the talk, we are going to do a quick introduction to chromatin confirmation capture or 3C technologies, and then kind of dive into our products and our supported applications with our three uh, pretty recently launched kits, the Dovetail Omni C kit, the Micro C kit, which is an m and based approach to high C, and uh, then our Dovetail High Chip kit, which allows you to look at the uh, chromatin DNA interactions um, that are present in your samples. So just to get started, uh, the world of chromatin confirmation capture follows a very um, straightforward core workflow where you start with cross-link chromatin. And uh, once that chromatin is cross-linked, we digest. Historically, that's been digested with restriction enzymes, and I'll show you why that might not be the best approach in uh, future slides. Once that chromatin has been digested, uh, we perform a ligation to where you're ligating to things that are close in 3D space rather than linear space. And then those crosslinks are reversed, which leaves you with chimeric DNA that's reflective of how the DNA is folded with inside the nucleus. And from that core workflow, you can do several different spin-offs, such as uh, amplifying known regions in 3C, 4C, and 5C approaches, or doing a genome-wide approach where you take all of that chimeric DNA and turn it into a sequence library, which is known as hi -C. That's one of the key things we'll be focusing on today. And then you could do uh, a protein-mediated approach, uh, much like ChIP-seq, where you pull down do a chromatin immunoprecipitation with an antibody, you can do that at the digestion stage, which allows you to enrich for uh, protein DNA interactions. And so what this gives us is a really powerful um, three-dimensional data type to short shotgun data, where uh, what you're looking at here in the figure is uh, on the x-axis, the genomic position, and on the y-axis, what you see is uh, a dot representing the read pair separation. So each dot represents a read pair uh, where read one maps to one region on the chromosome, and read two maps some distance away that's reflective of how DNA is folded on itself. Now what that looks like in uh, the real data are um, you get these hot spots of connectivity in between uh, within chromosomes, meaning that these regions are in more contact with each other um, than other regions, meaning these are uh, looped together or are very tightly compact heterochromatin, um, suggesting that those regions may be closed off or if it's uh, more broken up, these regions may be more open. The other thing that we see is that you get more signal within chromosomes rather than across chromosomes. So. This is truly a genome-wide approach to looking at how chromatin is folded in on itself and how it interacts uh, within itself as well. So as I mentioned earlier in the core high c workflow, um, using restriction enzymes to digest the chromatin might not be the best idea. So what we're looking at here are uh, genomic coverage where the x-axis is the uh, coverage in x amount, and the y-axis is how many bases are getting covered at, um, say, 20x or 30x. And in the middle, or the dotted line in each one of these figures is shotgun data, which you would no normally see a very Bayesian uh, distribution of coverage, very nice um, histogram. And if you use a single restriction enzyme, what you see on the left on the pink line is that there are many bases that aren't being included that just simply exhibit zero to no coverage. And if you move all the way over to 60X, there are a number of bases that are getting overrepresented in the sequence data. Now, 
if you were to add more restriction enzymes to that mix, it does generate a much uh, more histogram looking uh, curve of coverage, but there are still many bases that just simply aren't getting covered or are getting overrepresented in the data. Now, if you look to the far right, using a, a sequence independent endonuclease approach, such as DNA or MNAs, gives us a much more uniform distribution, uh, getting us very close to shotgun data. And I'll, I'll highlight some of the benefits of this coverage and um, what it means for you as a user in, in uh, upcoming slides. So another challenging part of HI-C uh, has been enriching the library in these long range information that's informative of genome topology. And so what we're showing here are three different approaches, the OmniC uh, approach, the multi-restriction enzyme approach, and a single restriction enzyme approach, where we're looking at uh, valid read pairs, which are trans reads and cis reads that are greater than one KB. Uh, out of the total library. And then of the cis reads that occur uh, within a chromosome, we're asking what's the insert size that is being captured through that paired in sequencing. And finally, we look at complexity, which is the percentage of unique molecules being sequenced at 300 million read pairs. And what we can see across the board is that OmniC, this uh, sequence independent approach is enriched in both valid reads and long range informative uh, insert sizes. So if you're looking at trying to capture loops or these finer confirmation events, being able to have more read support over those long range interactions. So historically, one of the things that has been um, challenging for HiC users is to enrich your libraries with long range information. And what we're showing here are three different approaches to uh, generating genome-wide HiC data, which is the OmniC approach, which is our sequence independent approach, and then multi and single restriction enzyme-based approaches. And what you can see when we look at valid reads, which are uh, all trans reads and uh, cis reads that have an insert size greater than one KB, we see that OmniC libraries are enriched in terms of valid reads. Now, if we dive into the cis reads and really look at the long range signal that's occurring, we're getting um, greater than 95% of our library contains reads that are greater than one KB. And then our libraries uh, consist of 80% reads that have an insert size greater than 20 KB. And then um, if even if we go to one megabase, which is truly long range information, we're seeing that our libraries are greater than 45% um, of cis reads that are greater than one megabase. Now, the other important thing is making sure that the libraries are complex, so you're making good use of the, your sequence space. And so here we're showing the percent unique molecules uh, at 300 million reads. And we're seeing again that uh, the OmniC approach is a far more complex library, meaning you're including more unique molecules in your sequencing run than the other two approaches. And so really what the uniformity of coverage and the, um, the enrichment and long range interaction allows us to do is it allows us to expand the applications of high seed data from just chromatin confirmation or genome assembly, which is what it's been historically used for, but to now include SV detection, uh, SNP and indel genotyping, and also haplotype phasing. So the, the product that really enables this all-in-one feature, this really rich data type, is our OmniC assay. And how it works um, is that it's very similar to the uh, HiC core workflow, where cells are cross-linked, and then they're fragmented, and they're uh, ligated, and that ligation event is reflective of the 3D orientation. Those cross-links are reversed. And then that chimeric DNA is turned into a library. But what's different here is instead of using a restriction enzyme to cut, we use DNAs, which gives us a nice uniform coverage across the entire genome uh, without any biases. So this shotgun-like coverage enables a multitude of applications that include both high C specific as well as applications that you would normally see with whole genome sequencing 
and I'm going to highlight what those applications are and what the data look like as we move forward. And so uh, one of the, the first things we'd like to show you is the, that our Omni-C product is really um, designed to be this all-in-one assay. So again, here we're talking about genomic coverage. Uh, these the, the figures that you see in the middle there are what you've seen previously. But what we're showing on the right is the read pile up in uh, Integrated Genome Viewer. And we can see that these different approaches leave very clear gaps in the coverage, which doesn't provide you as much support for things like SNP calling. And so what we're able to do is really provide you shotgun-like genome coverage, which then opens up applications apart from um, just genome confirmation or genome assembly. Additionally, what this means for you is it's going to save you money to cover the genome. So if we're looking at shotgun data, what you would actually need to get 30x coverage over 80% of the genome, you need to actually sequence about 41x, which is about 44 uh, million read pairs at uh, 2 by 150. Now, if we move to OmniC, which is our, uh, which is the coverage that mimics shotgun like most, to get 30x coverage, you really only need to sequence about 100 million reads more, which equates to about uh, an increase of about $400. Now, if you're trying to get good genome coverage with restriction enzyme-based approaches, you're sequencing uh, over 1,000 to up to $4,000 more to be able to cover your genome, meaning you're gonna have to sequence a lot more to include all of your genome into your analyses. With that being said, there will always be bases that exhibit low coverage because they're further away from a restriction site. So this, at the end, saves you money in your sequencing run uh, and includes more of your genome in both topology and shotgun-based applications. And so one of the things that um, HiC was originally used for this genome-wide approach was for scaffolding contigs. And so because our read types really do span the full length of the, the chromosome, those are truly long range reads. There are other long range approaches such as PacBio or Oxford Nanopore, which are long compared to uh, Illumina data. However, they still cannot span the full, uh, full chromosome because you're relying on DNA that's been extracted. Here, the uh, chimeric reads that are representative of that long-range chromatin folding um, are not dependent on that DNA extraction. So what we really get are these long-range, really, really, truly long-range information that can allow us to scaffold your contigs together and orientate them um, in a way that gives you up to chromosome length scale scaffolds in your genome assemblies. So not only can we use that for uh, genome assembly and scaffolding purposes, but we can now do SNP detection um, in a way that's uh, almost similar to that of shotgun data. So here what we're showing is a table of SNPs identified in the human cell line GN12878 using GATK. And what you can see is that the sensitivity and precision of the OmniSeq data set is very similar to that of the shotgun data and far superior than that of the restriction enzyme-based HiC. Now, what this means is, is that you have a much better capability of phasing these SNPs. So what we're showing here are phasing results with HapCut2, where we look at uh, shotgun data, which phases quite a bit of the heterozygous SNPs, which you'd expect with a very low switch error because it's including uh, most of the SNPs. But you can't do this across the chromosome because shotgun data is short read and is not informative at chromosome scale. With OmniC, because we get the shotgun-like coverage, we're able to phase uh, SNPs at a rate that's similar to that of shotgun data with a much lower error rate than you would see if you were to do this approach with restriction enzyme-based HiC. And you can uh, phase across the full chromosome, which is something that you can't do with shotgun data. So with the Omni-C approach, not only can you call and phase SNPs like you would with shotgun data with a low switch error rate, but you can phase across the chromosome, which is something that you can't do um, without that long-range information. 
So in practice, what we've done is we applied this uh, to the Atlantic bluefin tuna in a collaboration with PAC Bio and Stanford, where we did the uh, genome scaffolding, and then we were able to uh, phase that assembly into uh, that diploid assembly into two haplotypes that are contained on uh, 24 scaffolds, which is what is the expected uh, number of chromosomes within this fish. So again, not only can we assemble these genomes, but we can also uh, haplotype or generate the haplotype assemblies as well, which is something that is really cool and can't be done with just shotgun data by itself. Um, and also uh, requires a good amount of coverage to be able to phase, which you wouldn't be able to do with restriction enzyme-based Hi-C. So one of the other things that we'd like to point out is uh, because these information are long range, they're able to capture uh, structural variation. So what we're showing here are uh, the cancer cell line, HCC 1187 in the middle, and above that, we have the control line that does not contain these structural variations. And what we're pointing out are inversions, deletions, and interchromosomal translocations that we know exist in the HCC 1187 cell line. And we've pointed out in the contact matrix, again, each one of these points uh, represents a read pair um, that is spanning two parts of the chromosome, or that is linking two parts of the chromosome. And we can see that these events are captured in these contact matrices. And you can zoom in on those sites and look at the genes that are associated with these, uh, these genomic breaks. The other thing that we'd really like to highlight is that this is a really flexible assay. So we can do our OMNI-C approach down to 100,000 cells without sacrificing re, uh, library quality. The only thing that you're going to sacrifice there is your complexity, which makes sense because you're limiting the amount of DNA that goes into the assay. And then we're also compatible with hybrid capture approaches. So in the past, if you wanted to enrich over target sites, you had to redesign your panels to include restriction sites. Because we cover the genome like shotgun data, you no longer have to consider that. You can take uh, any one of the panels that are associated with one of these products and basically apply it to the OmniC data type without having to redesign anything. So it's really compatible uh, with a hybrid capture approach where you can look at the genes of interest and what the topology or chromatin architecture is associated with that gene. So moving forward into some of our MicroC kit and our high chip MNAs kit. And so uh, to get started in this section, we just kind of wanted to point out that um, epigenetics today is very linear. It's rooted in these primary order features such as methylation, histone modifications, and chromatin accessibility. And really all of the methods that you would use to assess these features give you this very linear coverage track. Um, as you can see on the very far right, where each one of these signals represents either an enrichment or depletion in that particular site. But it all revol uh, results in these linear tracks of data. But we know that genomes aren't actually organized like that. They're, they're not organized in a straight line. They're folded into this hierarchical uh, confirmation structure that comprises uh, chromosome territories, A, A and B compartments, which are active and inactive chromatin, or U and heterochromatin, respectively. These TAD clusters are the, the next feature as you zoom into this hierarchical structure, which are clusters of linked function genes that uh, are involved in similar processes. And then as, as you zoom in um, as high as you can go, you get to see these chromatin loops, which are these CTCF cohesin mediated looping structures where that brings uh, enhancers and promoters close to each other that recruits prol 2 that turns genes on, or if that loop gets break, can turn genes off. So this, this confirmation is really key in how your, your genotypes are expressed into different phenotypes. And so to really um, improve upon this confirmation signal, we've introduced the MicroC kit. 
So what this is, essentially what this is, is that we're using MNAs to digest the chromatin rather than a restriction enzyme or rather than DNAs. So with a restriction enzyme, you're going to cut at known sites. Um, the distance between these sites is variable, and also uh, the fragment length is also going to be variable on these uh, the fragments that are generated through restriction enzymes. With DNAs, you're going to have a lot more cuts, meaning you are going to include a lot more of your genome in the analysis, is what we showed earlier through the coverage analysis, but you still get rather ununiform fragment sizes. So if you're doing SNP analyses, that's fine. But if you really want to zoom in on topology, what you really need are um, uniform in size fragments that occur very uh, consistently across the genome. And one of those features are nucleosomes. And so we use MNAs to cut and chew back to nucleosome size fragments, which really gives us this nice uniform fragment that occurs throughout the genome that allows us to generate some of the best resolution that you can get with a high C type assay. And so one of the things that this does for us is it gives us better read support per loop. So here we're showing in the top row micro C data and we're comparing that to single and multi-restriction enzyme based approaches below at two regions. And what we've done is we've highlighted these looping events that have been outlined uh, previously by Rao et al in their 2014 paper. And we're asking how many reads support each one of these chromatin loops. And all of these libraries are sequenced to 800 million read pairs. So at, at a normalized read input, MicroC across the board provides more read support for these loop events. The other thing that's really cool about the uh, the micro C data type is you can phase nucleosomes during these high C reactions. So the figure you're seeing on the left is a metagene analysis um, around the uh, top or the high occupancy CTCF sites, and on the y axis is the coverage uh, normalized to read depth. And the blue line that you're looking at is the micro C, and the orange and yellow are single and multi restriction enzyme approaches. But what you can see in the microseed data is this nice oscillation that has a periodicity of 146 bases, or the amount of DNA that's wrapped around the nucleosome. And the peaks are data that's protected by the nucleosome during digestion, and the that links nucleosome. You're really able to see assays. And if you were to zoom in on a genomic region, which we've done here on the right, you can see in the top track, which is the micro C data, you get this nice peak signal that's representative of where nucleosomes occur, which is a feature that isn't captured with using restriction enzymes. But not only that, you can see that the coverage is much more uniform compared to the restriction enzyme based approaches. So if we were to take that oscillating figure that we saw previously on the left and turn that into a contact matrix for both the micro C and the restriction enzyme based high C data sets, what you would see are uh, the images that we're showing here. So in the image on the left, which is the micro C data, you can see these little dots that occur away from the diagonal. And each one of the dots that's closest to the diagonal is a nucleosome. Moreover, as we move further away from the nucleosome, we can see how these nucleosomes actually interact through their contact frequency. Now, that's something that you just can't do with the uh, restriction enzyme-based approach because you're not enriching for a nucleosome occupied uh, or DNA that uh, currently occupies a nucleosome. So you can't really zoom in any higher in the multi-restriction enzyme-based approach in the contact matrix because you're not enriching for features that are smaller than that. So with the micro C data, since we're enriching for features that are 146 bases, we can really dial in our contact matrices and see a whole new level of topology, which is the nucleosome positioning and nucleosome level interactions. So now, if you were to take this MNAs-based approach, which gives you the highest resolution that you can get in uh, a high C contact matrix, and apply an amino precipitation, so looking at the DNA-directed um, approach to confirmation, 
you basically get our new high chip kit. Um, a few things to point out here is that the workflow is very similar to that of high C, except um, when we fragment, we fragment with MNAs. So for chip users, that means no sonication. You don't have to sonicate here. We're relying on MNAs to do that for you. So that really controls a lot of that part of the experiment. And then you can do the immunoprecipitation. We have a list of validated antibodies. Um, alternatively, if you if we haven't validated one for you, we have provided you a protocol to validate to validate your antibody of choice. And the rest of the workflow just follows that of a normal high C uh, library prep. And the result here is something that's really really cool, actually. So on the top, what we're showing are uh, chip seek data uh, that's been pulled down on CTCF sites. And then below that, in green, we have the high chip data, again, also pulled out on CTCF sites. And what we can see is that the peaks between the chip and the high chip data uh, align quite nicely, meaning we're capturing the same enrichment of DNA that you would normally get in the chip seek data. But now what we can do is ask the question is, how often do these peaks actually interact with each other? And so what we're showing in the arcs below are contacts between these peaks and the thicker the line, the more frequent the contacts. So not only do you get this linear chip seek type data, you also now get the topology, that 3D structure of the data. Now, if you were to zoom in on any one of these peaks here, which we've done below, you can see that uh, because we're using MNAs in the green track, we're able to, again, phase nucleosomes, which is something that you can't really do with uh, chip seek data on its own because you're not fragmenting uh, at nucleosomes. You're, you're sonicating randomly. So you're really getting a very rich data type with our high chip library. You're getting the chip seek signal, you're getting the confirmation signal, and then you're also getting the nucleosome position signal all in one library. And so uh, we wanted to put up the antibodies that we've currently validated on. Uh, so again, if you don't see your favorite antibody here, um, we're either working on it, as you can see in our upcoming list, or we provide you a protocol to validate on your own. And with that, I wanted to say thank you and field any questions.